the Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. My mind is renewed with the Word. Therefore, I'm thinking those thoughts that please my Father. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name. Welcome, Spirit Food Christian Center family and all those that are around the world that are feasting on the Word of the Living God. I thank you that we're here to feed our faith on the Word, and the Word of God is food for our spirit. And so we're going to be talking today about remembering the Lord as you are young. Those who are young now, those who are of what we would consider of age, whereby they're not quite 18 years old or 21 years of age, but they're young in chronological years. But yet you can be mighty in the Lord and be more mature spiritually than you are physically. And so I'm going to be directing this conversation to the young people to remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Why? Because when you serve the Lord from the time you're young, you'll live your life filled with blessings, filled with prosperity, filled with health, filled with peace. And you'll be able to say, I'm glad I've lived for Jesus all of my life. Because living for him all of your life is a testimony. There are those who say, well, the Lord delivered me. And they talk about how they were delivered and how they were doing things really, really badly when they were young. But yet now that they're older, they can say the Lord did reach out to me and I received his mercy and his grace. And now I'm born again. But wouldn't it be great to have the testimony that the Lord has protected me and saved me and delivered me and made me whole all my life? I've known Jesus from the time I've been a youth. I have served the Lord because that type of testimony is a testimony of preservation. That type of testimony says God not only can can save and God can not only deliver, but God can also keep and preserve. And he starts when you're young because you've chosen to serve him while you were young. Let's look in our Bibles in the scriptures and let's look at uh, in Psalms 119, <clears throat> Psalms 119. And we're going to look at verse nine, Psalms 119, verse nine. In Psalms 100, the 19th version, I mean, verse 119th chapter, verse 9, we're going to look at that together and talk about remembering the Lord in the days of your youth. We're going to talk about how worshiping and serving the Lord, it pays off. When you honor God, even from your youth, you can live a life filled with blessings and you don't have to suffer. Psalms 119th division, verse 9, which says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Again, Psalms 119, verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word thy word. Now this is explaining that a young person does not have to have a filthy life. You don't have to say the Lord delivered me from a garbage lifestyle. You can say I've chosen to live a clean life and I started out young when I said I'm going to live for the Lord and do his will. You see according to the scriptures King David acknowledges when you are young and you dedicate yourself to serving the Lord, you will never regret the day that you made a decision to serve him with your whole heart. In Psalms 119th division, let's look at verse one. It says, blessed are the undefiled in the way 
who walk in the law of the Lord. Psalms 119, verse 1 again. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, Paul, writing to Timothy, told him, don't let anybody despise your youth, Timothy. Go ahead and be an example of a believer. Walk in the light of what the word declares and allow the spirit of God to use you all your life. We know that in the gospel, according to Luke, that Jesus Christ, he grew up and he was with God and with man because he chose to obey the word of God even from the time of his youth. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, which means love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You see, a young person is in a position where they can say, I don't have to live a messed up life. I can live a good life. I don't have to have a, an, a, a, a challenge with my body getting me into trouble when I can say, I've sidestepped all the trouble because I've chosen to live for the Lord, to do his will. And my decision to live for him has preserved my life, preserved my mind, and preserved me financially, and has made it possible for me to live a wonderful, blessed life in the Lord. It is possible to live your whole life saying, I choose to live for Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean that a person has not come to the place where they have received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. What I mean by this is turn over to the book of Romans and we'll look at the Apostle Paul and talk about how that he discovered that he, when he was a child, he was innocent. And when he was innocent, he was not aware of the sin nature until he was confronted with the law of God. Turn in your Bible to Romans and we'll look at the third chapter of Romans. Romans chapter 3. Let's look at that together. For the Apostle Paul recognized that as a child, he was going to have to grow up and mature, and he was going to have to come to the place where he would serve God. But Paul recognized, I, as a young person, I didn't know the Lord. I did not know the Lord in a guilty way when he was a baby. Paul recognized I was alive unto God with out the law once, but when sin revived, I died, meaning that I came to the place where I had a challenge with walking with the Lord. Let's look at that verse of scripture. Um, here it is. It's in the Bible. Turn over to Romans, Romans, and we'll look at chapter, chapter five. Romans chapter five. That's good. And then we'll look at chapter 7. Let's look at it. Chapter 7. This is a scripture I was looking for. Romans chapter 7. And we'll look at verse. Let's look at verse 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Now what Paul was saying there is, when I was alive as a little child, before the Ten Commandments came to me, I was alive in an innocent way to God. I knew him in the sense that God could communicate and talk with him. He could talk with God because he knew I didn't just make myself. God had to have made me. And so his heart was tender. He was innocent. He didn't know that there was a sin nature that wanted to take over and cause him to be identified as a sinner. 
until he came to know the Ten Commandments. When he was told what not to do, he said, I was alive without the law once. Sin, when the law came, verse 9 of Romans chapter 7, for I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. That meant when I was told what not to do, I found that there was a law in my members, in my body that said, do what you're told not to do. And Paul was not aware that that law of sin and death was lurking around in his body until or there was a law of sin and death that would cause him to come to the place where he would be convicted as a sinner. And then he his innocence would no longer be identified as him being innocent. He recognized he had a nature of rebellion that rose up. Sin revived and he died. So Paul recognized in verse 10 of Romans chapter 7, and the command, commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. But sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy and, and the commandment holy and just and good. Paul is explaining what I was told to do was right and good. But when I was given an opportunity to obey it, he said, I didn't do it. Now, Paul is not saying that he went out and committed some great devastating crime. He was just aware that there was a law in his member that caused him to have an attitude of rebellion. You see, rebellion is of the devil. And when Adam and Eve sinned against God, rebellion was lodged in the earth realm. And we have this treasure, the Bible says, our newborn nature. We have this treasure in an earthen vessel. Paul was made aware. I got something going on with my physical body that does not want me to do the will of God. Well, how is Paul going to do the will of God? Paul recognized as a little boy. He was going to have to deal with that sin nature. And one of the things that he came to the conclusion of, and that is, I have to make sure my way lines up with the word of God. Now, we read it in the book of Psalms there. How that how can a man, young man cleanse his way by taking heed unto the word of God? By taking heed to the word of God, that means I've chosen to let God be the direction of my life. And when I say let God, I mean the word which God has given unto me will be that which I choose to live by. I remember when I was a little boy, there were statements that were made about, you know, Christians and Christians having the opportunity to read the Bible. And people would say, you know, understand the Bible. You can't understand the Bible. You see, the Bible is, is written by man and has filled, it is filled with mistakes and so forth. People had all kinds of ways in which they were describing the Bible as a book that was confusing others and causing others to go to war. They called it the religious wars. But when I came to of age, I said to my friends that were of different colors, I said to my friends that were of a lighter complexion, and I, I asked them, do you all read the Bible? They said, we don't read the Bible. I asked my friends that were of a darker complexion, do you read the Bible? Of those that were considered, identified as coming from the, the Asian community, do you all read the Bible? No, we don't read the Bible. And then I asked the people that have come from a different ethnic background, I said, do you all read the Bible? No, we don't read the Bible. And I came to this conclusion, everybody has an excuse not to read the Bible. Who is then reading the Bible? And I said, I'm going to be one who reads the Bible. I'll read the word of God for myself. I'll read the Bible and I'll carry the Bible and I'll allow the Bible to be that which I will read on my lunch break. I will read the Bible during my times of, of uh, releisure. Instead of turning on the television, I determined I was going to let the Bible speak to my heart. And the more I read the scriptures, the more I found out 
this Bible makes sense. I asked the Lord one day as I was reading the scriptures, I said, Lord, are you as cool as I'm reading in the scriptures here? Why didn't anybody else tell me that you were this cool? The Lord said, I'm even cooler than that. Keep reading the scriptures. I read the scriptures and I began to uh, digest the scriptures and allow the scriptures to speak to my heart. And I came to the conclusion at an early age, there's no better way to live a clean life than to walk in line with the word of God. I determined I'm going to allow the word of God to be final authority for my life. Now, when you say that you're going to allow the word of God to be final authority for your life, you're basically saying, I'm going to walk by the word and not by sight. Or we could say it this way, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Paul the Apostle said the faith of God that he preached was the word of God. And so he called the word of God the word of faith. And so I recognized the more I got into the word of God, the more confidence I had in the Lord. The more I got into the word of God, the more I understood when he was speaking to my heart. I could hear his voice clearly, and I knew the Lord has asked me to do things that was explainable in his word and very reasonable. It was now an opportunity for me to grow up in my walk with the Lord. I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, we'll look at verse 1. Because we're talking about remembering the Lord in the days of your youth. And if you're a young person and you're saying, what can I really get excited and put my passion behind? What can I really do to make a difference in the world? I don't want my life to be for naught. I don't want another catastrophe to come upon the world and people's time upon the earth may be limited. You want your life to be lived with purpose. What can I give myself to to cause my life to have a purpose. My advice is give yourself over to the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2 of Romans 12 now. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, I found out from the scriptures that Jesus is also called the word of God. That means when we start reading the word, we're really reading of Jesus. We understand that Jesus is revealed by and through the word of God. So when a young person says, I need a person to follow after, I want to be identified with someone that I admire. I want to live my life for that which will do good and make a change in the world. Young person, live for Jesus. Give yourself over to him. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and you'll find that your commitment to live for him, keep looking at him, will cause you to be made conformable unto this image that he is before God the Father. You see, Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. He is Lord and Savior. He is free from sin, for he's been raised from the dead and he will die no more. And he never has sinned and he won't sin. So if you keep looking at Jesus, if you keep following after Jesus, you'll live a sin free life. That doesn't mean that your body doesn't have the law of sin in it. It just simply means that you'll walk in the life of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that spirit of life in Christ Jesus will cause you to live free from the law of sin and death and what it tries to do against those who don't keep walking after the word. <clears throat> now, we know this from the scriptures, that there are examples of those who were young, 
who have chosen to live a dedicated life for God. We know that Daniel and his three brothers, or Jewish brethren, that were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they determined that they're going to live for God and not defile themselves with the ways of the Babylonian kingdom. When they were told, drink this wine, drink this alcohol, and go ahead and do what we tell you to do. He says, you know, I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow. And his brethren too. We're going to learn and grow, but we're not going to partake of that, which we know is not right in the eyes of our God. Let's look at that in the book of Proverbs. Let's look at this in Proverbs. If you don't drink alcohol at a young age, you won't ever have to be delivered from alcoholism. If you don't take drugs and mind altering things when you're young, you don't have to be delivered from it when you're older. You're going to walk in wisdom and walk free all the days of your life. Let's look at at the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, Proverbs, the 20th chapter. Because when we look at this verse of scripture, we're going to see that God is encouraging us who are believers to live a clean life. Hallelujah. Let's see here. Proverbs chapter 20. Let's look at verse 27. And then we're going to look at other verses of scripture. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. That means that God is going to look at your spirit and talk to you, to your spirit. You are a spirit being, so you want to focus on the spiritual things and how to please God from your heart. Don't be concerned that there is a law of sin that operates in the flesh because you choose to be spiritually mature and obey God. Now, look at this verse of scripture. We're still in the book of Proverbs, and we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 23. Look at Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, Proverbs chapter 23, and we'll look at verse 29, Proverbs 23, verse 29. Who hath woe? That means who's shocked? And who's having real challenges because of the devastation of what they're seeing? Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babblings? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as the as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. And when he's talking about there, the ships in those days, they had people that sat in the top, what was called the crow's nest, and they would look for fish or whales that they could hunt. And if a person chose to stay away from alcohol, they would never get that dizzy feeling that one received when they were in the top of the mast on a ship. And so people who drink are going to get unbalanced. They're going to find it difficult to walk. They're going to find it difficult to pass a sobriety test. Why? Because alcohol will influence your judgment. It will cause you not to have right judgment. And not just alcohol, but we're also talking about any mind influencing drugs. You're told by the scriptures, don't partake of it, even though others tell you this is the best way to go. No, you need your mind. Don't give your mind over to the influences of the world. I don't know how many people that have said, 
They wish they had never started drinking. They wish they had never started vaping. They wish they had never started doing drugs. Why? Because the sorrow and the woes that have come upon them because they did not follow after this scripture has caused them great hurt and harm. Certainly the Lord can deliver them. Certainly the Lord can bring them to a place of blessings. But how much time have they lost because they wasted it in the bottle, in a tube, or in some other mind-altering drug thing. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 23. We're looking at verse 32 because here we see God is warning about the painful effects of getting involved in drugs and alcohol. He says in verse 32, at the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. I don't know very many people that will walk upon a venomous snake and allow the venomous snake to try to bite them. But people go to drugs and alcohol and they are engaging in teasing the devil and the devil will bite. You can't play with alcohol and mind altering drugs thinking that it will not impact your judgment. It will. How many people have ruined their lives by being under the influences of alcohol and drugs? In verse 32, he goes, goes on to say again, this is Proverbs chapter 23, verse 32. At the last it biteth like a serpent and it stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. He says, you're going to be attracted to stuff you would never mess with if you weren't under the influence of drugs. There are people that have awakened out of a stupor or out of out of a drug induced comatose type of of sleep. And when they awakened, they saw who they spent the time with and they were like incensed or angry with themselves. Why would I allow myself to get involved with this person? Well, if they weren't under the influence of drugs or alcohol, they would never have done that. And so the word of God is warning us, don't allow your influences. Don't allow that which you participate in to be that which is of alcohol and drugs. Allow your your life to be free from mind altering substances. Now, we know that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they came to the place where they said, we're not going to participate in the alcohol that the Babylonians were serving up. He said, I'm not, we're not going to do it. Well, they were told that if you don't do it, you're going to be having to deal with some consequences. And they were like, well, you got to do what you're going to do. But we're going to do what we're going to do. And that is we're going to honor God and we're not going to partake of the king's liquor. We're not doing it. You see, as a young person, you can make quality decisions. You can make a decision. I'm not going to do those things that displease God. I'm only going to do those things that please my father. And God told us in the scriptures, don't participate in alcohol or drugs. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 23, 32. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 32. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. That means when a person is under the influence of alcohol or drugs, they're going to say some things that they would have never said if they were not under the influence. You see, drugs and alcohol causes a person to no longer have a defense mechanism. In other words, there's no filter to what they are thinking about and what they say. One person said it this way. Did I say that out loud because I was thinking it inside, but I didn't say I didn't think I spoke it outside. Well, you're going to say some things that come to your mind from the devil because the devil now has a willing vessel that has no defense mechanism. A person who's engaged with alcohol and drugs is really an accident waiting to happen. Young people stay away from alcohol and drugs. The devil has ways in which he causes people to suffer and alcohol and drugs is definitely a way. Now we do know this in Proverbs chapter 
23, verse 33. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Verse 35 of Proverbs 23 now. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I wake? I will seek it again. That means a person who's on alcohol and drugs doesn't feel the effects of the damages that they're causing at the time they're under the influence. But when they come out of the influences of the alcohol and drugs, they can look around and see all the damage that was done. They'll feel the pain then. How many people have been arrested for driving under the influence of drugs? How many people are now going to visit those clinics that they call clinics that are getting medical growth so that they can get high, claiming that they're trying to make their life easier. In reality, it's a trap of the enemy. It's causing them to have more complex lives rather than simple lives. You see, when a person has chosen to live clean and be sober and to allow the Spirit of God to cause you to be full of joy, to cause you to be carefree, when you allow the Holy Spirit to make you high and not the things of the world, you'll never regret that. You'll always be happy and blessed that you allow the Spirit of God to make you high. I love it this way. I drive under the influence of the Holy Ghost all the time. And I am not a bad driver. I'm a good driver. And I don't duck when I see the police. I encourage the police because I am under the influence of the Holy Spirit. But notice in Proverbs chapter 23, he said in verse 35, the results of those that become involved with alcohol and drink and vaping and smoking and doing those mind altering pills and things. He says here, they have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it again. Now he says, the devil has provided an addictive element to the elements that people are smoking and drinking. Those who are engaged in alcohol, their judgment is distorted. Their balance is off. They're going to say things they would not normally say. They're going to get involved in the lives of people that they should not be involved with at all. And then they're going to have a habit, a craving for something that is that has been designed to take them away from living a beautiful, blessed life. Young people, don't get involved in alcohol and drinking. Don't get involved in smoking and drinking and taking va and vaping and all that kind of thing. Why? Because it's going to cause you to be dependent. And notice in verse 35, the latter part of Proverbs 23, verse 20, verse 35. He says, when shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. That means after all of the destruction, after all of the dysfunction, after all the things you said and you can't take back, after all of the punishment you receive, you are going to awaken from the alcohol and the drugs and the mind altering substances and say, I'm going to do it again. What person in their right mind will say, I'm going to do it again? No one. That means you're not in your right mind. And, you know, it's important for you to serve God, spirit, soul and body. And Paul said in First Thessalonians by the Holy Ghost in the fifth chapter, verse 23, he says, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Alcohol is addictive and it will influence and it has terrible consequences. And somebody says, well, I don't drink alcohol. I take vaping or I'm doing other drugs. I don't do alcohol. I have news for you. Anything that influences your capacity to think clearly and soberly is something you should stay away from. Because all the time 
that you engage in something that you should not be doing and it has an addictive nature to it, it will keep calling you back and saying, I'm not through with you yet. Alcohol is like it has a voice. It has a voice that says, come, come back to me. Allow me to be in your life again. It has an appearance that looks to be attractive. And I have news for you. There's a lot more that you can be looking at than alcohol and drugs. Why won't you look at the Lord? Keep looking at Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And you won't be surrounded by sin and you won't be participating in sin and destruction and doing those things that you'll be sorry for in the end. When a person has chosen to serve the Lord at an early age, you're going to have a healthy, long, strong life. Turn over and let's look at Proverbs. We're Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. And <clears throat> we'll look at this because if you look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, here's the formula that God gives to show you how to live a blessed life all your life. And I have a kind of a statement that I always make, and that is never get tired of winning. Never get tired of enjoying life. Never get tired of walking in victory. Never get tired of having God say to you, well done, thou good and faithful child. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Again, verse 2 of Proverbs chapter 3. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. God's word will add length of days. God's word says they'll add peace unto you. And you'll have a long life, a blessed life, if you'll focus on the word of God. Keeping God's word as the desire of your life, keeping God's word as that which you are getting excited about, then you're going to live a blessed and wonderful life and God will use you greatly to do great things. Young people, I want to remind you, Remember the Lord in the days of your youth, and you're going to live a long and healthy, strong life as you serve the Lord. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3. The book of Colossians chapter 3. It's toward the back of the Bible. Colossians chapter 3. We'll look at verse 1 because in the book of Colossians, we have an encouraging word from the Lord. And that encouraging word from the Lord is... If you keep looking at Jesus, keep looking at the word, you're going to live a life filled with blessings. What's wrong with being blessed? Nothing. What's wrong with being healthy? Nothing. What's wrong with being in good standing? Nothing. What's wrong with having a clean record? Nothing. What's wrong with having a, a family that you're responsible to and your family is, built, is being well cared for and your finances are great? What's wrong with that? Nothing. What's wrong with being able to wake up in the morning without having fear and without having a thought that somebody may sneak up on you and do something wrong? There's nothing wrong with being secure in the Lord. Do the will of God. Live for the Lord all the days of your life. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. He says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affections. That means set your desires. Let your... the. <clears throat> The focus of what you're going after be on the things which are from above, not on things on the earth. You see, as a young person, you can set the tone of your life right now and say, I'm going to be informed through the word of God. I'm going to do what God says to do. And if anyone asks me what turns me on, what quests do I have in life? What am I going after? I'm setting my affections on things above. 
because if I keep going after Jesus, if I keep him before my eyes, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And God is pleased with my faith and God will honor me and God will give me length of days. He'll give me long life. And that word peace is the word prosperity. God will give you long life, peace. He'll give you prosperity. What's wrong with that? Nothing. So allow yourself to go after the Lord, even from your youth. Some people think that because they're young, that they've got plenty of time to goof off. But I think when you start seeing the events going on in the world now, when you start seeing a cataclysmic fallout of a pandemic where people are dying young and old, it helps you to evaluate. Maybe the world needs to wake up. Maybe people are not going to live as long as they thought they would if they don't listen to the Lord. If you knew this was your last day upon the earth, if you knew this was the last few hours of your life, how would you treat people? How would you act? How would you greet people? How would you treat yourself when you know you're going to have to see the Lord in a few hours? I would venture to say you'd live cleanly. You'd want to do what's right. You'd set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. You would have the attitude, no, no, person, I'm not getting involved in any wrongdoing. Why? Because I'm getting ready to go see the Lord in just a little bit, and I, have, I am not going to go see him with my hands dirty. I'm not going to see him making excuses. I'm going to live right and do right because in just a little bit, I'm going to go see the Lord. You see, it's a wise person who acts like this could be their last day, their last hour, their last moment. I find out when people look at time like that, they don't have time to be arguing. They have no time for fussing. They have no time for holding grudges. They have no time for being unforgiving. When you know that this could be the last moment you see the person, you start thinking, I think I better obey God and forgive and walk in love and esteem others better than myself. Because when your time is up, you're going to have to give an account to God. Young person, allow your days to be lengthened. Allow your life to be long. Allow God to bless you all the days of your life. You don't have to say, the Lord gave me my mind back after I've gone out and blown it with drugs. Or I've gone out and I've drinking so much, I made bad decisions and I've got kids all over the world and they don't even know their father. Or a woman can say, I've chose a bad man to be the father of my children. And they regret that. Could it be because they were under the influence of alcohol and drugs? How many people would love to take back the decisions they made because they were under the influences of alcohol and drugs? Let's look at another scripture here in Ephesians. You see, people think, well, I need to be. I need to be in a position where I'm carefree. I don't want all the things upon the world, the pressures of the world to consume me. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's look at verse 15. Verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. He says, and wherefore, he said, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, be, but be filled with the Spirit." Speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts unto the Lord. He says, don't you be drunk with wine. Don't you be under the influences of drugs. Allow the Holy Ghost to be your influence. Allow the Holy Spirit to clear your mind. Allow the Holy Spirit to be that which causes you to be carefree. People of God, honor the Lord in spirit and soul and body. 
Now you may say, well, I'm older than young, but you can be young in spirit. You can follow after the will of God. You can do the will of God right now. All you have to do is say, I'm going to live a committed life and I'm going to allow the spirit of God to show me how to serve him so that I can have a blessed and wonderful life doing what God asked me to do. People of God, I want to encourage you. Live for Jesus all your life and act like this is your last day. Act like this is your last hour. Act like this is your last minute and make sure you dedicate yourself, your passions and your desires to doing God's will. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things should be added unto you. And if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things are added unto you, People, you will not regret it at all. Somebody says, well, I will not. What if it is my last day? Well, would you rather go to God with clean hands and say, I've done what you've asked me to do. Oh, Lord, I've been obedient. Or would you rather stand before him having taken your last breath and say, I don't know what I'm going to do, Lord. I did mess up and I messed up terribly. So, Lord, I just I ask you to forgive me. Well, why don't you live a lifestyle now that honors God? I've got to quit because I've run out of time. But I want to encourage young people, remember the Lord in the days of your youth. You'll not regret it. You'll live a, a, a blessed life all your life. And you'll be able to say, thanks be unto God, which giveth me the victory through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, everyone, please, would you bow your heads now? And this is have this reflection in your heart. Think about the things we've talked about, that you're going to live a committed, dedicated life. You're going to live a sanctified life, a holy life separated under God's plan and purpose for your life. And if you do that, then that commitment you make to be consecrated, you'll be even as Jesus. You're growing favor with God and with man. You'll live under the blessings of the Lord. So I want to encourage you to do the will of God. I want to encourage you to live a focused, dedicated life where you say, I'm honoring Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Now, there's a person named Ryan Weaver. You're asking, what can I do if I don't recognize myself anymore? I've never had a foundation growing up on both physically and spiritually. I struggle with things falling apart. I go back to square one. I lash out at things. What you can do, Ryan Weaver, is do what we're going to lead you to do right now. Acknowledge that the word of God will be the focus of your passion. The word of God will be that which you set your affections on. And remember what we declared earlier. Jesus is the word of God. Now, people, say these words after me. Jesus, I will live for you. I will do your will. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, you are the word of God. And my way can be blessed by following after your word. And I choose to live for you, Jesus. I choose to dedicate my life for you, Jesus. I choose to let my mind think on what you say. And your instruction to me is to follow after the word. All those who said that confession say in Jesus name, I commit to living for the Lord. Amen. Now, as a person who wants to walk free from sickness, disease, want to walk free from addiction, addictive behavior, you want to walk free from a life that's filled with entanglements, Jesus is still Lord and Savior. He is Savior because he knows how to save. But you've got to be willing to cooperate with the Lord. You have to be willing and you must obey the Lord. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you're strung out on drugs, you can say right now, in Jesus' name, Jesus, thank you for setting me free. Now I submit myself unto your authority, and I'm going to walk in the freedom that you've given me. If you'll do that, 
and get up right now and throw away the drugs, throw away the alcohol, throw away the stuff that the devil's been using to bind you up. If you're a believer in Christ Jesus and you're and you're ready to live for the Lord right now, exercise your capacity to obey the Lord. Humble yourself unto God's instruction. Resist the devil and the devil has to flee from you. The devil can't make you do anything that the Lord has made you free from. For the scripture says, he whom the son has made free is free indeed. And I'm declaring by the word of God, by the authority of the name of Jesus, that you are free by the power of the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the word that is spoken unto you, you are now clean and you are free. Now stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. I encourage you, begin to praise and worship and thank the Lord. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And keep saying that every day. Say it every time a thought comes to your mind. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Don't you have these cravings? Well, if you tell your body, I'm free in Jesus. Now, your body may argue against you because the devil will try to work through your body and thoughts to your mind. But you, from your heart, declare out of your mouth, I'm free. Jesus has made me free. And the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Start going after the word. If a thought comes to your mind, grab your Bible and just start reading where the Spirit of God leads you to read. And read it out loud. If your mind is screaming loud, you just go ahead and let the devil hear you read the scriptures out loud. The scriptures are the word of faith. And when you take the word of God and allow the word to fill your ears and your heart. You're going to live a free life in Christ. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Will you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy, but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father, and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spiritful Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www myspiritfood.com Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30am and be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.